Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Google I.O. As an AI-first company, we are at an exciting inflection point. Let me start with a few examples of how generative AI is helping to evolve our products. Let's say you got this email that your flight was canceled. The airline has sent a voucher, but what you really want is a full refund. You could reply and use Help Me Write. Just type in the prompt of what you want, an email to ask for a full refund, hit Create, and a full draft appears. As you can see, it conveniently pulled in flight details from the previous email. And it looks pretty close to what you want to send. Maybe you want to refine it further. In this case, a more elaborate email might increase the chances of getting the refund. And there you go. I think it's ready to send. Help Me Write will start rolling out as part of our workspace updates. The next example is Maps. Imagine if you could see your whole trip in advance. With immersive view for routes, now you can, whether you're walking, cycling, or driving. Let me show you what I mean. Say I'm in New York City, and I want to go on a bike ride. Maps has given me a couple of options close to where I am. I like the one on the waterfront, so let's go with that. Look scenic. And I want to get a feel for it first. Click on immersive view for routes, and it's an entirely new way to look at my journey. I can zoom in to get an incredible bird's eye view of the ride. And, and as we turn, we get onto a great bike path. And if I want to check traffic and weather and see how they might change over the next few hours, I can do that. Looks like it's going to pour later, so maybe I want to get going now. Immersive view for routes will begin to roll out over the summer and launch in 15 cities by the end of the year. Another product made better by AI is Google Photos. Every month, 1.7 billion images are edited in Google Photos. AI advancements give us more powerful ways to do this. Let's have a look. This is a great photo, but as a parent, you always want your kid at the center of it all. And it looks like the balloons got cut off in this one. So you can go ahead and reposition the birthday boy. Magic Editor automatically recreates parts of the bench and balloons that were not captured in the original shot. As a finishing touch, you can punch up the sky. It changes the lighting in the rest of the photo so the edit feels consistent. It's truly magical. We are excited to roll out Magic Editor in Google Photos later this year. Our ability to make AI helpful for everyone relies on continuously advancing our foundation models. So I want to take a moment to share how we are approaching them. Today, we are ready to announce our latest Palm model in production, Palm 2. Palm 2 builds on our found fundamental research in our latest infrastructure. It's highly capable at a wide range of tasks and easy to deploy. We are announcing over 25 products and features powered by Palm 2 today. Palm 2 models deliver excellent foundational capabilities across a wide range of sizes. We have affectionately named them Gecko, Order, Bison, and Unicorn. Gecko is so lightweight that it can work on mobile devices, fast enough for great interactive applications on device, even when offline. Palm 2 models are stronger in logic and reasoning thanks to broad training on scientific and mathematical topics. It's also trained on multilingual text, spanning over 100 languages, so it understands and generates nuanced results. While Palm 2 is highly capable, it really shines when fine-tuned on domain-specific knowledge. We recently released SecPalm, a version of Palm 2 fine-tuned for security use cases. It uses AI to better detect malicious scripts and can help security experts understand and resolve threats. Another example is MedPalm2. In this case, it's fine-tuned on medical knowledge. This fine-tuning achieved a 9x reduction in inaccurate reasoning when compared to the model, approaching the performance of clinician experts who answered the same set of questions. In fact, MedPalm2 was the first language model to perform at expert level on medical licensing exam style questions and is currently the state of the art. We are also working to add capabilities to MedPalm2 so that it can synthesize information from medical imaging like plane films and mammograms. You can imagine an AI collaborator that helps radiologists interpret images and communicate the results. Palm2 is the latest step in our decade-long journey to bring AI in responsible ways to billions of people. 
It builds on progress made by two world-class teams, the Brain Team and DeepMind. We recently brought these two teams together into a single unit, Google DeepMind. Using the computational resources of Google, they have focused on building more capable systems safely and responsibly. This includes our next generation foundation model, Gemini, which is still in training. Gemini was created from the ground up to be multimodal, highly efficient at tool and API integrations, and built to enable future innovations like memory and planning. While still early, we are already seeing impressive multimodal capabilities not seen in prior models. Once fine-tuned and rigorously tested for safety, Gemini will be available at various sizes and capabilities, just like Palm 2. As we invest in more advanced models, we are also deeply investing in AI responsibility. This includes having the tools to identify synthetically generated content whenever you encounter it. If you look at the synthetic image, it's impressive how real it looks. So you can imagine how important this is going to be in the future. Metadata allows content creators to associate additional context with original files, giving you more information whenever you encounter an image. We'll ensure every one of our AI-generated images has that metadata. As models get better and more capable, one of the most exciting opportunities is making them available for people to engage with directly. That's the opportunity we have at BAR. Large language models have captured the world's imagination, changing how we think about the future of computing. We launched BARD as a limited access experiment on a lightweight large language model to get feedback and iterate. And since then, the team has been working hard to make rapid improvements and launch them quickly. With Palm 2, BARD's math, logic, and reasoning skills made a huge leap forward, underpinning its ability to help developers with programming BARD can now collaborate on tasks like code generation, debugging, and explaining code snippets. BARD has already learned more than 20 programming languages, including C++, Go, JavaScript, Python, Kotlin, and even Google Sheets functions. Now, BARD can also help me understand the code. Could you tell me what chess.board does in this code? Now, this is a super helpful explanation of what it's doing and makes things more clear. All right, let's see if we can make this code a little better. How would I improve this code? Okay, let's see. There's a list comprehension, creating a function, and using a generator. Those are some great suggestions. Now, could you join them into one single Python code block? Okay, now Bard is rebuilding the code with these improvements. Okay, great. How easy was that? We've also heard that you want dark theme, so starting today, you can activate it right in Bard or let it follow your OS settings. In the next few weeks, BARD will become more visual, both in its responses and your prompts. So if you ask, what are some must-see sites in New Orleans? BARD's going to use Google Search and the Knowledge Graph to find the most relevant images. The French Quarter, the Garden District, these images are really giving me a much better sense of what I'm exploring. We'll also make it easy for you to prompt BARD with images, giving you even more ways to explore and create. Imagine I'm 18 and I need to apply to college. I won't date myself with how long it's been, but it's still an overwhelming process. So I'm thinking about colleges, but I'm not sure what I want to focus on. I'm into video games and what kinds of programs might be interesting. Okay, this is a helpful head start. Hmm, animation looks pretty interesting. Now I could ask, help me find colleges with animation programs in Pennsylvania. Okay, great, that's a good list of schools. Now to see where these are, I might now say, show these on a map. Here, Bard's gonna use Google Maps to visualize where the schools are. This is super helpful and it's exciting to see that there's plenty of options not too far from home. Now let's start organizing things a bit. Show these options as a table. Nice, structured and organized, but there's more I want to know. Add a column showing whether they're public or private schools. Perfect, this is a great start to build on. And now let's move this to Google Sheets so my family can jump in later to help me with my search. You can see how easy it will be to get a jump start in BARD and quickly have something useful to move over to apps like Docs or Sheets to build on with others. Okay, now that's a taste of what's possible when BARD meets some of Google's apps, but that's just the start. BARD will be able to tap into all kinds of services from across the web, 
with extensions from incredible partners like Instacart, Indeed, Khan Academy, and many more. We are removing the wait list and opening up BARD to over 180 countries and territories. BARD is also becoming available in more languages. Beyond English, starting today, you'll be able to talk to BARD in Japanese and Korean. And we're pleased to share that we're on track to support 40 languages soon. And now, to hear more about how large language models are enabling next generation productivity features right in Workspace, I'll hand it over to Aparna. From the very beginning, Workspace was built to allow you to collaborate in real time with other people. Now, you can collaborate in real time with AI. AI can act as a coach, a thought partner, a source of inspiration, as well as a productivity booster across all of the apps of Workspace. Our first steps with AI as a collaborator were via the Help Me Write feature in Gmail and Docs, which launched to trusted testers in March. One of our most popular use cases is the trusty job description. Every business, big or small, needs to hire people. A good job description can make all the difference. Here's how Docs has been helping. Say you run a fashion boutique and need to hire a textile designer. To get started, you enter just a few words as a prompt. Senior level job description for textile designer. Docs will take that prompt, send it to our Palm 2 based model, and let's see what I got back. Not bad. With just seven words, the model came back with a good starting point written out really nicely for me. Now you can take that and customize it for the kind of experience, education, and skill set that this role needs, saving you a ton of time and effort. Next, let me show you how you can get more organized with Sheets. Imagine you run a dog walking business and need to keep track of things like your clients, logistics about the dogs, like what time they need to be walked, for how long, etc. Sheets can help you get organized. In a new sheet, simply type something like client and pet roster for a dog walking business with rates and hit create. Sheets sends this input to a fine-tuned model that we've been training with all sorts of sheet specific use cases. Look at that, the model the model figured out what you might need. The generated table has things like the dog's name, client info, notes, etc. This is a good start for you to tinker with. Sheets made it easy for you to get started so you can go back to doing what you love. Prompts are a powerful way of collaborating with AI. The right prompt can unlock far more from these models. What if AI could proactively offer you prompts? Even better, what if these prompts were actually contextual and changed based on what you're working on. My niece Mira and I are working on a spooky story together for summer camp. We've already written a few paragraphs, but now we're stuck. Let's get some help. As you can see, we launch a side panel, something the team fondly calls Sidekick. Sidekick instantly reads and processes the document and offers some really neat suggestions, along with an open prompt dialogue. If we look closely, we can see some of the suggestions like, what happened to the golden seashell? What are common mystery plot twists? Let's try the seashell option and see what it comes back with. Now what's happening behind the scenes is that we've provided the entire document as context to the model along with the suggested prompt and let's see what we got back. The golden seashell was eaten by a giant squid that lives in the cove. <laughs> this is a good start. Let's insert these as notes so that we can continue our little project. And this is exactly what AI can help with. I see a new suggestion on there for generating images. Let's see what this does. The story has a village, a golden seashell, and other details. And instead of having to type all of that out, the model picks up these details from the document and generates images. Say you're about to give an important presentation, and you've been so focused on the content that you forgot to prepare speaker notes. The presentation is in an hour. Uh-oh. No need to panic. Look at what one of the suggestions is. Create speaker notes for each slide. What happened behind the scenes here is that the presentation and other relevant context was sent to the model to help create these notes. And once you've reviewed them, you can hit insert and edit the notes to convey what you intended. So you can now deliver the presentation without worrying about the notes. Next up, we're going to talk about search. To give you a sense of how we are bringing generative AI in search, 
I'm going to invite Kathy onto the stage. Let's start with a search for what's better for a family with kids under three and a dog, Bryce Canyon or Arches? Now, although this is the question that you have, you probably wouldn't ask it in this way today. You'd break it down into smaller ones, sift through the information, and then piece things together yourself. Now, search does the heavy lifting for you. What you see here looks pretty different, so let me first give you a quick tour. You'll notice a new integrated search results page, so you can get even more out of a single search. There's an AI-powered snapshot that quickly gives you the lay of the land on a topic. And so here you can see that while both parks are kid-friendly, only Bryce Canyon has more options for your furry friend. Then if you want to dig deeper, there are links included in the snapshot. You can also click to expand your view, and you'll see how the information is corroborated. So you can check out more details and really explore the richness of the topic. This new experience builds on Google's ranking and safety systems that we've been fine-tuning for decades. These new generative AI capabilities will make search smarter and searching simpler. Let's say you're searching for a good bike for a five-mile commute with hills. This can be a big purchase, so you want to do your research. In the AI-powered snapshot, you'll see important considerations like motor and battery for taking on those hills, and suspension for a comfortable ride. Right below that, you'll see products that fit the bill, each with images, reviews, helpful descriptions, and current pricing. This is built on Google's Shopping Graph, the world's most comprehensive data set of constantly changing products, sellers, brands, reviews, and inventory out there with over 35 billion listings. In fact, there are 1.8 billion live updates to our shopping graph every hour. And for commercial queries like this, we also know that ads can be especially helpful to connect people with useful information and help businesses get discovered online. They're here, clearly labeled, and we're exploring different ways to integrate them as we roll out new experiences in search. And now that you've done some research, you might want to explore more. So right under the snapshot, you'll see the option to ask a follow-up question or select a suggested next step. Tapping any of these options will bring you into our brand new conversational mode. In this case, maybe you want to ask a follow-up about e-bikes. So you look for one in your favorite color, red. And without having to go back to square one, Google Search understands your full intent and that you're looking specifically for e-bikes in red that would be good for a five-mile commute with hills. And even when you're in this conversational mode, it's an integrated experience. So you can simply scroll to see other search results. Now, maybe this e-bike seems to be a good fit for your commute. With just a click, you're able to see a variety of retailers that have it in stock and some that offer free delivery or returns. You'll also see current prices, including deals, and can seamlessly go to a merchant site, check out, and turn your attention to what really matters, getting ready to ride. These new generative AI capabilities also unlock a whole new category of experiences on search. It could help you create a clever name for your cycling club, craft the perfect social post to show off your new wheels, or even test your knowledge on bicycle hand signals. These are things you may never have thought to ask search for before. This new search generative experience, also known as SGE, will be available in labs along with some other experiments. And they'll be rolling out in the coming weeks. AI is not only a powerful enabler, it's also a big platform shift. Every business and organization is thinking about how to drive transformation. That's why we are focused on making it easy and scalable for others to innovate with AI. That means providing the most advanced computing infrastructure, including state-of-the-art TPUs and GPUs, and experience